And uh, I guess we'd walk off. The next thing that happened was a, uh, a young uh, gay man was speak to death in the old Dover Hotel in downtown LA. It predated bathhouses. And it was where gay men went having personal sex. I didn't know that, but at the time, but they murdered this young gay man. The police department does in LA. I went, uh, somebody said, you have got to go to the inquest. Mm -hmm. I went to the inquest, it was on Good Friday. And when I heard what these cops did to this young guy, five foot four inches tall, and these two big groups on the stand, and when they brought in the street kids, transgender folks, put them on the stand, in every case they asked, are you a homosexual? And in every case when they said yes, it was like the drapes fell on the eyes of the jury. I could see it, I mean, you know, and, and as I said, the cops described almost laughingly, uh, you know, that uh, yes, he bit one of our fingers, the nurse came in, but he fell out on the Hollywood freeway out of the car. Mm -hmm. They then had to rush him to the hospital. They broke his spleen, I could go on and on with the things they did to this young man. And uh, I could not get their parents, so they were Orthodox Jews, and uh, they would not touch it. I mean, they were so freaked out, they just didn't want, I wouldn't let it go. And so I led demonstrations down there, went to the trial, told our church it's time for us to stand up. They didn't take me seriously. Um, they, they thought, you can't be, quote, they were trying to say, that's being political. I said, no, that's being spiritual. Jesus, I always quote from what Jesus said in uh, Luke, the fourth chapter, you know, I've came to bring deliverance to the captives. I said, we've got to go out, we've got to put, uh, you know, we can't wait for other people to help us. I said, if we won't stand up, we've got to get up off our blessed assurances and get out on the street. I said, that's what we're going to, well, next thing I know is somebody calls me from San Francisco. A gay brother's been fired from his job. The company is there, state steamship company, nine months before Stonewall. I go down and lead the demonstrations. I'm the only gay person that's, uh, that's written about New York that is written about outside of New York. And the, the historians are very good there about remembering that I was leading demonstrations on the West Coast for the first one ever took place in New York like this. And uh, so we ended up with this, uh, you know, only about five of my members showed up. <laughs> and I learned very quickly, people are frightened, Troy. You've got to remember, this is a, you know, you may be out here in a collar, but all of them can't do that. And they don't, their pictures, some of them, you know what I mean, because they'll be fired, and I knew that too. But I kept trying to say that you don't know how good it is to come out of the closet. Once you do, nobody can do anything to you. Once you, and even if they fire you, we'll get you a better job. We'll help you get a better job. And we demonstrated, my God, uh, for three days, you know, and a crowd surrounded us. There was, I mean, like they had never seen homosexuals need jobs, you know what I mean? And we didn't even use the word gay yet. I mean, it was like, you know, the clinical word was used. And, uh, the second day we were there, somebody started dropping bags of water out of the building. Never hit any of us, but wet businessmen and women as they walked by, so they became allies real quick. They wanted to whip whoever was in the building, dropping the water down on you. Know. And uh, the third day we had the demonstration, and um, I went back to church. And I didn't beat up on my membership. I just told them what had happened. And I said, we're going to have another demonstration. And so I immediately started, uh, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, and I, I would go and we were in a round robin. We'd go to the courts. The courts said, you have to go to the state legislature. The state legislature said, go to the courts. And finally I said, I went to the governor, <laughs> Jerry Brown. And uh, we went up and we uh, very honestly lobbied uh, uh, they, the state. And thank God we did because um, in the middle of this, a um, African-American brother walked up to me and he said, Rupert, what do you want? And I said, I want the laws that say two consenting adults, they, you know, we can have sex. These old sodomy laws, we want them all. He said, okay, we're going to care. Just like that, you know, I'm thinking, who is this? <laughs> he said, I want something from you. I said, what's that? And he said, uh, I want your endorsement for something. I said, well, you know a church can't endorse in America. He said, no, but you can. And he said, I'm running for lieutenant governor of the state of California, Mark Diamond this is how God works, all right? He wins. We then moved to change the laws. It went through the state assembly pass. Went to the state senate. I flew up, everything. We'd gone up, had Frida Smith do her Dear Dora Diesel-like poem for the state legislature. Wonderful poem about 
having to live in the closet. Dear Dora, poor Dora. How she, when she went to work, she had to put on a dress. You know, I mean, y'all been through this. You, 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 some, you know, that, you know, that, and, and, you know, here it is. And she wrote this wonderful poem. So she did it for the ones who came to our meeting. And, uh, my God, the state senate, for the first time in the history of our state, deadlocked. And the lieutenant governor is the president of the senate. He was in Colorado honoring the only other African-American lieutenant governor in our country at that time. And he was there and they called him and said, you have to get back here. He said, well, what do you mean I have to get back there? They said, it's tied, you know, 25 to 25. You have to break the tie. He said, oh, can't, no, can't you? They said, no, we've sequestered the Senate. They can't leave. If they leave, they can't come back in. You got to come home. So he had to fly back to San Francisco. They had to pick him up in a helicopter because of fog, fly him to Sacramento, the state capitol, land on it. Thank God I knew every politician there. And I had to go to the restroom, and they said, you can't come back in. Well, I had to go. <laughs> and I went to the restroom, and when I came back, just under the treasure, the same good friend of mine who had ran for the mayor of our city, uh, and I take him to gay bars, and he got all excited. I took him to a leather bar. He thought it was a union bar because of all the hard hats and people in uniforms. <laughs> he really did. He couldn't get over that, you know. So the governor, did he, the lieutenant governor, the, did governor, governor the lieutenant governor walks in, walks right up to the podium, bangs it, and says, the lieutenant governor votes aye. And it was sent to the governor. And Jerry Brown had promised me he would sign the bill if it came to his desk. We waited and waited and waited. The longest I thought, oh God, it's going to be vetoed by tomorrow. When all at once his secretary held a press conference and said, oh my God, he had signed it 10 days ago and I didn't realize it. And here we are. And all those old sodomy laws came out off the state of California's uh, books. And it gave us our end. Mm -hmm. And uh, until uh, 2000, um, let's see, 2006, when uh, the U.S. Supreme Court struck down all the sodomy laws that underpinned all the laws mm -hmm. against us in America. And uh, I'll talk about that tomorrow. We'll start with just one. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to pause and have a break. Okay. Um, we've been going for about 50 minutes, so then you do very well. And please, uh, I love people, come up and introduce yourself too during the break. All right, I'm going to meet you.